Hey guys, welcome back to Smart Simple Fit. I'm Davin, and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 lifts that I would use to speed run my physique if I were to go back in time and give myself these exercises with the goal of putting on as much muscle as possible in the shortest amount of time to get back to where I am, if not even better. I was nominated to make this video by none other than Protein Man, as well as Stan Strength. This is part of an ongoing trend in the uh, noble natty community, so to speak, and it was started by Bald Omni Man. And many of these top 10 videos have been made ever since. So if there's some redundancy and overlap with my video, I apologize in advance, but genuinely, these are the top 10 lifts that I would use to get as jacked as possible, as quick as possible. All right, number 10, band pull-aparts. This can be done at home, or in the gym or on the go, it's such a great way to train your rear delts and traps especially. It feels like you're literally ripping something apart using your shoulder blades to expand your chest and to really focus on that rear delt. It's, it's a pump that is like none other. I would typically recommend doing band pull-aparts with very high reps, something like 20, 30, even 40 plus reps. You might want to even do these as part of a bench press or overhead press warm-up routine since it does rush blood directly into the shoulder joint and it does help the rotator cuff get warmed up a bit, at least in my experience that's the case. Now this is a very similar exercise to something called a cable rear delt fly, but unlike that cable rear delt fly, this can be done more conveniently with two arms at a time. That is a big advantage. So you'll want the main drawback is that a lot of resistance bands are light, so get more bands, double up or triple up if you need to, and buy some more intense resistance levels. I like the tube style resistance bands, but I'm sure you could do this with a variety of different band styles, uh, but the, the therapy bands probably wouldn't provide you the most intensity. That being said, you can double up and it's a very comfortable exercise. I slightly bend my elbows and I just try and pull that band around my chest. I get it to my chest and I pull it around. I pull slightly down and go as hard as I can. And I generally take this to failure or beyond with rest pauses. This is a great one for building up some of that yoke and also your rear delts. It's just an exercise that feels really good. And unlike a lot of rear delt exercises, the strength curve allows you to have a more constant tension. So unlike doing rear delt flies with a dumbbell from a bench, uh, you don't end up with this goofy situation where there's a ton of tension at the top and nowhere else. Number nine, barbell curls. This is an exercise, funnily enough, that I used to have a total love-hate relationship with. What I loved about it was obviously that the barbell gives you this nice stable platform to curl lots of weight. And because it's a barbell, it has a great load potential to put big plates on it, small plates on it, make little progressions. But I could never get around the fact that it felt terrible for my wrists to go much heavier than say 50, 60 pounds for reps, trying to do 80, 90 pounds for reps just felt really gross. There's a couple things that I've done to remedy that that make me love this biceps curl variation. And the number one change that made a difference for the wrist was instead of just doing it sort of like a neutral position, and by neutral I mean uh, how far your arms are, your elbows are from your body, and I just opened up the grip width just a little bit. So my hands are a little bit wider than my hip width apart. They're, they're about an inch or two outside of my legs. And what happens when you do that is it changes that angle of the forearm such that in that supinated position, the straight bar no longer gives you the issues that it does before. Obviously in this position, right, the easy curl bar feels a lot better for people because of the, the curvature matching the shape of the wrist. But if you just go slightly wider in that supinated position, it feels fine. It made a huge difference. Another small adjustment you can make is to slightly bend your wrists like this, just to give your uh, forearms slightly better leverages. Now, if you still feel intense work in your forearms, so be it. If it doesn't cause you any golfer's elbow issues, which so far for me it hasn't, it's just gonna be some free forearm work that's not a big deal. I've experimented with a lot of biceps curl variations in the past from cable curls to dumbbell curls done strict or alternating. Never really cared for things like incline curls and spider curls, but I can tell you all of those variations I previously mentioned, they have their issues and limitations. But the barbell curl is great. 
I go lighter now than I used to, so I don't really feel the desire to go heavier than uh, something like uh, that I could do a set of 10 with or 5 with. In fact, I'd actually recommend on the barbell curl, you try doing more like 12 to 20 reps or even 15 to 20. Create yourself a narrow range of reps that you work towards the upper end to for progression. And once you get to the end of that range, add two and a half pounds to each side of that bar. That five pound total increase is a lot better than what you'll be stuck with for uh, dumbbells in most situations, right? Most of the time, dumbbells go up in increments of five. So you'll be going from 35 to 40, 50 to 55, et cetera. And that's a huge jump. It can take you months and months before you're prepared to advance like that. Being able to put 2.5 pounds or less on each side of the bar is a huge advantage. So I'm really enjoying the barbell curls. And guys, if you're not clicking with a biceps curl variation, sometimes you just gotta go back to the basics. That's why the barbell curl is number nine. Number eight, the 90 degree triceps pushdown done with a straight bar. Some people like doing this with ropes. Other people use that curvy bar, angled bar, uh, the one that sh is shaped like a V. I prefer just doing this with a straight bar. I have a history of tendonitis on both elbows, which has been a limiting factor in my training for, uh, I would say probably one and a half years, maybe a bit longer than that, maybe closer to two years. Back when years ago, I gave myself a not so good push-pull legs program that had too many exercises, too much volume, probably poor rep quality as well. And that gave me tendonitis. I've been dealing with it ever since. And what I've done to remedy it is a lot of high rep blood flow work directed onto the tendons. That's allowed me to do heavy weights every week, pretty much without problems, especially in recent months and in the last year, it's not been a big deal. But what it has made difficult is finding a triceps movement that feels good, especially something that I can target the long head with since the long head is more important for aesthetics, right? Actually increasing the circumference of your arms. So the 90 degree push down is the variation that feels best for my elbows. That might not be the case for you. You might want to go uh, to a deeper range of motion. If you can get more range of motion out of your push down, I recommend that you do. But if you're struggling with tendonitis, like I have in the past, this is a push down variation that feels amazing. I get a juicy pump in my long head, despite the minimum range of motion. I take that sucker to failure and it works just fine. All right, number seven, the good girl machine, as it is sometimes crudely called, or the hip adduction machine, adduction. This is the one where you, yes, practice closing your legs and lifting a big old stack of weight. I think this one is very underrated for increasing the size of your thighs. If you care about leg day and having massive tree trunk thighs, let me tell you, this exercise is underrated. Now, currently, in my opinion, I'm not that strong. I can't squat four plates. I can't even squat back squat 350. I can back squat probably above three plates on any good day, but I'm not that strong objectively, or at least in my opinion, I'm not. Despite that, my legs cold measuring right around 24 inches. And I attribute a lot of those size gains directly to the good girl machine. By working the adductors on the inner thigh, you can massively increase the circumference of your legs. So I think this is an underutilized muscle group in general, but also machine. Uh, I don't normally brag about my numbers, partly because they're not that impressive in my opinion, but on this machine, I can put up some pretty stupid numbers and I plan on putting up even more ridiculous numbers by the end of the year. My goal for the end of the year with this machine is to hit 300 pounds for 10. My best so far is 260 for 10. And yes, it does feel good. I'm not particularly worried about injuries, but I do recommend you warm up before you touch any weights that are close to 200 pounds, all right? And at number six, we have the basic vanilla dumbbell lateral raise. This is a classic way to put tons of size on your shoulder. Yes, overhead presses are great for building your side delts. Yes, rowing can influence your delt size significantly. Yes, you can do something different like a loo raise if you really want to, but there's nothing wrong with the tried and true, tried and, there's nothing wrong with the tried and true classic of just doing some good old fashioned lateral raises. Try to keep your technique relatively strict, Go to at least shoulder height, keep your arm mostly straight, lean forward if it feels better, slightly externally rotate your arms if that helps, and focus on controlling the eccentric phase of the movement. Try to avoid bounce and momentum and work with the weight 
That's generally that's genuinely appropriate for your strength level. If you can't handle 15 strict reps with that weight, it's probably a little bit too heavy. Number five, the seated barbell overhead press, specifically the one that's done without back support. Why I like this exercise over something like the typical military press done with the barbell as well, is that it forces you to be more strict with your technique. And for me, since I have scoliosis, it feels better on my spine when the loads get heavier. Ironically, my a seated barbell OHP with no back support is almost exactly as strong as my military overhead press anyways. So it's not like I'm even limiting my loading potential or maybe by five pounds at the absolute most. So get rid of the temptations to use leg drive and to really lay back into your reps, right? Avoid the temptations to do those sloppier things that may induce poor recovery and may lead to injury down the road. Not that military press is dangerous, but again, force yourself to be strict. Do those reps as clean as possible, sit down on a bench if you need to, and do some seated overhead press. This will give you massive deltoids. You feel it in your traps. It's an awesome exercise. I highly recommend you do it. Number four, the chest to bar lat pull down. Yes, that's right. Lat pull downs are making it on a list instead of pull ups <laughs> and instead of rows. So why do I like the lat pull down machine? I think it's a very undervalued tool to build a big back in general. I think that people give the pull up lots of credit and hey, credit where credit's due. Pull ups are an awesome exercise. I love them. I'm actually partly using lat pull downs as a means of increasing my ability to do just a bar pull ups, as well as other pull up variations that I plan to focus on in the future. But what's great about the lat pull down machine, especially for heavier set people and beginners who are heavier set, maybe trying to lose weight, guys who are really big professional strongmen and, and heavy weight class powerlifters, well, for a lot of people, you need an exercise that can scale down to build a big back in the first place. And even at an advanced level, if you weigh 220 or 250, it's very difficult to do pull ups, let alone weighted pull ups. So the lat pull down is very scalable at the lower end, whereas uh, weighted pull ups are very scalable at the higher end, right? Your body weight plus a bunch of weight versus doing sets that are potentially 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds less than your body weight. And that can be a really great, really, gr that can be a really, really great way to get absolutely jacked. The second part of the equation is not just the scalability, but pulling the bar all the way to your chest and being strict every time. You can use any grip width uh, or style that you want. My preferred way is to just do it. The good old classic slightly outside shoulder width. One tip I will say for lat pull downs, this probably applies to pull ups too. If you focus on slightly externally rotating as you pull, it will generally feel healthier for your shoulders. And as you pull down, squeeze your shoulder blades down to help engage your lats. That's a very important cue. And Look, this is extremely high carryover to pull-ups, so if you're not strong enough to do pull-ups now, commit to training chest-to-bar lat pull-downs for like four to six months, and you will see a massive improvement in your ability to train pull-ups. It's an awesome exercise. The one at my gym caps out at 200 pounds, so I think I'm going to have to mog that stack later this year and maybe even put some dumbbells on top of it. This is a highly underrated exercise, but if you do lat pull-downs properly, it will give you a massive back. Number three, this was a toss up, okay? I almost gave this to conventional deadlifts because when I was in high school, I was big into working out and I did not train hip hinges and that was reflected in my small back and my small hamstrings. But even though conventional deadlifts are an exercise I still love, I'm gonna go with what's considered by many to be the greatest deadlift accessory exercise of all time. And that is the 45 degree hyperextension, sometimes called the Pete Rubish back extension. This is where you use that 45 degree chair to do back extensions with a barbell. It's load potential, just like the barbell curl, is very high. You can go up by small increments. It's a movement that feels good. There's also uh, a sense of scale. There's also scalability in as far as range of motion. You can choose to go down deeper if you elevate the thing by putting it up on plates, right? You can use one plate, two plates. You can really add range of motion if you want to. In addition to that, you can train with different size plate heights if you're not dealing with a bumpers only situation, right? So those 25s and 35s will be smaller than the 45s. Same thing for the 10s. So whether that translates to at an at a early strength level, right? Being stuck with those lighter weights because you're not that strong, or even as you get more advanced, 
using more smaller plates can give you greater depth. You can also do this with a variety of different uh, barbells out of necessity. I've done it with easy curl bars. I've done it with curling bars. I've done it with power bars. They all work just fine. Just be mindful to control your eccentric. And when you come up, try not to rock back and forth too much. Do it with control in both directions. And this is an excellent exercise. The recovery, in my opinion, is a little bit better than the conventional deadlift. You're less likely to get SI joint pain. And that's why I think I would pick this overall over the conventional deadlift, but they're both fantastic exercises. It was neck and neck. I love both of these exercises. Either way, they will serve you well. This is a great way to get an absolutely jacked back, and it feels really good. Number two, this might be my favorite exercise of all time at the moment, but we'll see. It's a toss-up between this and, and number one. This is the front squat, the vanilla barbell front squat. It's one of the greatest ways you can get jacked quads ever. This is how Arnold Schwarzenegger, in a large part, got big legs. He found that his proportions were not that great for back squats, and I find the same thing is true for myself. That doesn't mean either of us have an excuse, or you watching this video have an excuse not to train back squats, but maybe you should emphasize front squats if they feel better for you and allow you to train your quads and recover really nicely, and that's what front squats do. They're scary, they're challenging, they're hard on the cardio sometimes, they may be hard on your upper back or core. I find the biggest tip that I can give to people with the front squat, practice the bar position. If you get it close to your shoulder joint in a way that's comfortable and it's not squishing your throat or your collarbones, you're going to have better success with this because of basic leverage, right? The closer it is to the insertion of your deltoid, the weaker you're going to be, right? This is a type three lever that your muscle inserts down onto the bone, the bone goes all the way out here, that's called a type three lever. If the weight sits closer to the axis of rotation, that's your shoulder joint, you're going to be stronger. So get used to getting that bar in close to your throat and keeping it there, whether that's by grabbing it, pushing on it, twisting it, whatever you need to do to keep that bar in position, that's what you need to focus on. And yes, there's more to the technique than that. There's obviously the component of upper back strength, but the biggest thing you can do to improve your front squats is to get that bar in position and keep it there. And like I said, this is an excellent way to grow your quads. It also trains your adductors hard. Uh, it trains your glutes, but to a much lesser degree. It trains your glutes, but probably to a lesser degree than something like a high bar and certainly much less than something like a low bar squat. So maybe take that into consideration if you're trying to train front squats exclusively. They're not as good at giving you that cake. But either way, an excellent exercise, totally worth, 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 totally worth learning. Yes, it looks scary and feels scary the first few times you do it, but if you give it its due respect, this is a super rewarding leg exercise. Number one, the paused bench press. This is an awesome exercise. I love Larson press. I love normal touch and go bench press. I love dumbbell bench. I love push-ups, weighted push-ups. There's so many good horizontal presses to choose from, but if you would just commit to using a barbell with a grip width that feels good for you on a flat bench, doing a minimal leg drive, controlling your eccentrics, doing an honest pause, even one second at the bottom is a good honest pause. Lose that momentum, feel that bar go into your chest, feel that weight against your sternum, okay? This is a super rewarding exercise. Uh, anyone I've listened to describe be paused benching in their history is a way to level up pec hypertrophy and a way to clean up technique and enhance recovery. You'll, you'll use a little bit less weight than you would on a competition touch and go bench press. Those are all huge advantages, right? And so some of the advantages even of something like a Larson press can be achieved for various people just by doing a simple paused bench, right? And that would be true of deadlifts and high bar squats and a lot of exercises. Paused reps clean up your technique, they're good for recovery, and they're awesome for hypertrophy. So if I had to pick 10 exercises to level up my physique, those would be mine. Tell me what yours would be in the comments if you disagree with some of mine, that's great. Uh, before we go, I would like to nominate Adam Ogilvy from SAF Athletics or Strong <laughs> AF Athletics, and I would also like to nominate Gravity Training. So guys, please make a video response. I'd love to see your list. And if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.